Good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar, another session in our Legal Technology Webinar Series. I'm Helen Schwartz-Grossman, Marketing Manager at Waldoc, and I have a few housekeeping items before we get started. The session will be recorded. Uh, everyone is in mute, but if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the questions pane and we'll address the questions at the end of the session. Today's webinar is a roundtable discussion on a popular topic, well docs categories. We often ask, what are categories? How do you use categories? What are best practices for setting them up? And how do you determine which ones you should use? To help us provide answers and suggestions to these questions, we are joined by several of our inner circle bars. And I'm pleased to introduce our panelists, Frank Jones of Legal Software Connections, Sandy Johnson, also with Legal Software Connection, Bill Baker of Baker Cadence Solutions, Charlotte Creros, also with Baker Cadence Solutions, and Swearian of Baker Cadence Solutions, John Rock of Docs Advisors, Rick Barnauer of SiteTech, John Heckman of Heckman Consulting. And our moderator today is Rebecca Satin, CIO of WorldDocs. So thank you in advance for the attention you'll be giving the webinar today. And Rebecca, your turn. Thank you, Hella. Uh, so the WorldDocs software can be customized in a number of ways. And we always recommend that new clients work with one of our VARs to ensure that it's set up in a way that will be user friendly. Uh, one such helpful customization is the categories feature. WorldDocs categories are unique in that multiple categories can be applied to a single document. But more about that later. Before we get started, let's find out uh, who in our audience is using categories. Hella, can you put up the first survey question? Okay, so the first poll, let's see, is your firm using categories? So, so far it looks as if, uh, I don't know, we're almost at, we're at about 50-50 with this. Um, I think I'll give it a few more seconds to get uh, additional votes coming in. But it looks like we're at about 50-50 in terms of uh, uh, people who are using categories and people who are not. Okay, uh, why don't you close this poll and uh, we can put up the next Hi. poll. So the next question, how many public categories does your firm use? So let's see what sort of votes we get. Interesting that about half the people are actually using categories. And a lot of people are unsure about what this means. Um, and we've got about, let's see, 17%, 15% in the one to 10 and 5% in the 25 or more, and 45% not used. Shall we move on to the to our final poll question? We will try the last one. So for our final question, is your firm using folder categories? And we've got a lot of, I don't know what that means. And we have maybe 18%, 20% yes, 26% no, and a lot of people who don't know what that means. Um, so I think during the course of this webinar, that information will be explained among a lot of other uh, components about categories. And uh, again, we have a great group of our inner circle resellers with us today, uh, and they have collectively over 100 years of experience in implementing WorldDocs. They'll be sharing some of the creative ways they've come up with to use this feature at their client sites. 
And I think this week we have John Heckman starting the discussion. So John, I turn things over to you. Okay, thanks. Um, categories are basically dynamic meta tags that can be used, as, in my view, best to describe a workflow or the status of a document on top of document types. They supplement document types. Um, they can also be used for as folder substitutes or subdoc types for people that are nostalgic for Windows Explorer. And I think Frank is going to talk about that uh, more in detail. As Rebecca said, more than one category can be assigned to a given document, and they can be added or removed without changing anything about the document or where it is or, or anything like that. So, for example, you could change the status of uh, draft to final. Uh, there are three kinds of categories, personal, folder, and public. Personal is just you. Nobody else can see your personal categories. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can categorize your documents from your cat listserv or whatever. One option, uh, thank you, Sandy, is a follow-up personal category that you can use to mark documents that need follow-up. So then you do a search or you can put it on a, a bookmark, say find all the documents that need follow-up. It's a great tracking mechanism. Uh, folder documents are applied to a specific matter or in, in some cases, doc types. Unlike personal or public, they're not searchable. They just display when you do a search for, say, all the documents in a matter. Um, but you can use them, for example, to identify, say, different depositions that are all gathered under the document type deposition. Uh, different people that are having depositions, different medical records. You can use them as replacements for uh, Windows folders and so forth. The last, and you see here, I've got personal and folder. The last are generic public categories. The obvious examples here are draft, final, file, needs review, needs signature, and so forth. And as I said, you can change and modify these as you work. Um, you need to definitely need to manage these centrally. And as with doc types, less is more. Um, you can go wild and you want to absolutely avoid uh, categories that are the same thing as doc types. I had a, recently had a client call me up, a new user said, I need new, some new categories. She had a list of nine categories of which eight already existed as document types. You want to avoid that like the plague because with that kind of duplicate duplication, you can never really be sure of who can find what where. Okay. One uh, place that uh, a lot of my clients that are litigation firms really love categories is you can use categories for litigation support make World Docs into a sort of mini litigation support program. So for example, you can have categories uh, that say helps other side, hurts other side, uh, privilege, expert discovery, question on discovery, uh, needs Bates numbers, uh, attorney privilege log, and so forth and so on. Uh, and these would all be types, things that attach to different documents uh, according to their status. So if you have something that says needs review, then you can have the, the attorney in charge uh, find all the documents that need review, review them when the review is done, you take off, you remove that category um, and mark it however it needs to be marked. Uh, there's lots of other ways of, of using categories but these are some of the things that I and some of my clients have found to be uh, most useful. That's about it. Thanks, John. Um, I, I uh, all of you know me well enough to know I can't I can't let you 
talk about that without throwing in my two cents, just because I have some very strong feelings about uh, World Ox and, and throwing e-discovery data into it. Um, I just want to be clear to everybody that there are purpose-built e-discovery systems out there that handle things like Bates numbering and keeping track of document productions and all of that. Um, WorldDocs can be used for that, and a lot of people are using it for that. Uh, I just wanted to point that out and also suggest that because client data that is uh, um, that is involved in the discovery process, uh, to me it has separate security requirements than internal work product. So if you are going to use WorldDocs for this, I would often suggest to people that they set up a separate cabinet structured similarly to their primary client files cabinet, uh, putting the e-discovery data in that separate cabinet and secure each matter such that uh, only the people who absolutely need to see that data can see it. Because again, you know, if something happens, you know, any, any sort of, I don't know, I always am concerned about um, you know, just the added security requirements associated with that e-discovery data. Um, but I will get off my soapbox now and <laughs> move along. And uh, Rick, I think uh, you were up next to discuss uh, different ways of, of viewing category information. Absolutely. Uh, I'm Rick Bernauer. We work with a lot of firms and try to expose them some of the features in WorldDocs that perhaps aren't used as much. People have used WorldDocs for a long time. Categories kind of came in and you may have just set it aside and said, I'll deal with that someday. Other people use it as just the, one of the primary ways that they work with it. But if you're one of those that's not familiar or trying to uh, get acquainted with it, I'm going to talk some about the basics and using personal categories to give you kind of an introduction to that. Again, a personal category is something that each user can set up. Everyone can see the document, even if you've tagged it as being in one of your personal categories, but it makes it that you're the only one who can search to say, show me all the stuff that I have tagged in this way as my personal category. But what's the easy way to do that? When you first save a document, there's a categories button and you can click that. But sometimes an easier way to do it is from the World Docs document list, which we have an example on the screen right now. If you add a column by going up there in that kind of dark gray area up by the columns next to where it would be description or modified or client number, you can do a mouse click up there and it'll display a menu of different fields that you can add. And one of those that I would recommend adding is categories so that there's a column just for categories. Remember, if you do that, to click on that customize little gear button uh, that's on the screen as well and save it as your favorite or default view out there. But by having a column for category, when you have a list of documents on the screen, you can right click into that category field and it'll bring up a little menu which lets you add categories or work with them. And you could then add a personal or a public or whatever kind of category to that document out there. And it makes it so it's just more of a pull up list that you can, you can work with from there. Or you can tag multiple documents and then add a category and have them all fall into that area. So that's a good way to work with those things, like these are things that I need to review and work with more, or public categories. But going back to that personal category, each user can create their own list. They can do that by create edit category, or when they click on a save and they go to the categories button, go to your personal list, and then you get to give the category a name whatever makes sense to you. Here are some firm forms that I like. Here's stuff that still needs work. Here's documents that I need to get Joe's signature on. You know, here's things that have to do with my expense reports or vacation requests. 
whatever types of categories of documents you might like, you can think of personal categories as kind of like being additional favorite files. If you've ever used that where you tag a document with a little heart and make it a favorite, this lets you even further subdivide them into different ways. So you get to give the category a name. You can even select one of those pretty little icons, the stars or the flags, or there's even more out there if you wanna look at them. And that way the document is tagged I still need to work on this, or this is one of my favorite firm forms. And that way later on, you could do a search and find those, or go back and watch some of our prior uh, videos for these uh, panel discussions and look up bookmarks and learn a little bit more about setting up bookmarks for your different personal or public categories, make them easy to be able to, to find out there. But that I find very easy. One of the advantages is if your firm is just starting to use categories, by using personal categories, you're only going to do something that you can see. You won't be embarrassed by what you've created and everybody else dealing with it. And it gives people get a chance to get used to categories and tagging documents that way before they make the decision as to what should be the public categories. So that's kind of what I wanted to mention there. Yeah, I've also seen situations, Rick, where um... I don't know, certain people just like to organize things in a certain way that works very well for them and much as they, they think that the entire firm would benefit from their organizational strategy, uh, that's not always the case. So I think personal categories are a great, uh, a great feature for those people. <laughs> so Frank, uh, I know you definitely have some uh, strong feelings about uh, the use of categories. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so I will turn the turn it over to you. Well, thank you. I think that both Rick and John, in their own ways, have actually talked about strategy. And John has a definitive strategy for using categories for two things that I think I understood. One is workflow capabilities to trigger a follow-up of some kind, and then that creative use in uh, litigation support. Rick's idea, I think, is also to maybe introduce them to the firm as personal because it's simple to do, it's flexible, and it doesn't really invade the space of anybody except your own work lists. Uh, at Legal Software, we date back 30 years, so we're proud to say we've been helping World Software for 30 years, and we saw um, categories evolve from something that was called libraries. So libraries were invented 25 years ago. I actually know the firm they were invented for, and they were invented for the purpose of trial preparation, that a given matter would reach a certain phase and there were certain things that they wanted to track in the documents being produced, witness binders, those kinds of things, and those files could be associated with such choices. Libraries became what we now know today as folder categories. But what I wanted to do today is basically try to really simply suggest that I think you should combine strategy with features. Sometimes features are just features, they get lost. But I really think that important things in life and important things in software, we should have a strategy for it. So the screen that uh, Rebecca put up there is simply an idea, a possible strategy. And I can say that some of our newer customers that have started with WorldDocs once categories were very pervasive, have, have taken a step back and said to themselves, if you look at that screen, there's a choice that says binder. Now, that's my suggestion that maybe doc type is not the perfect term because maybe doc type would imply a huge volume of choices and too many choices, as John Heckman said, often leads to chaos. Simple is definitely better. So our strategy has started with, let's create a field, call it what you want, binder, folder, doc type if you wish, that's fine, but make a, a list, a field table that's very simple so that as people save their documents, they would agree upon it belongs here. So there's no confusion as to where they belong. 
in my example on that screen, this uh, first set of interrogatories to defendant is assigned to the discovery binder because that type of file is part of the discovery process. So we now have a way to get that in the system in a place that will be beneficial to everybody. They could find all discovery and keep those in a bucket separate from all correspondence, separate from all court filings and so on. But then along comes categories to where you could as a firm get together, figure out together, what are a, a group of public categories to further embellish, to augment what you've just done? So in my example here, you see that you could select category. And if you wanted to have a choice for interrogatory, you could. So the use in this example strategically is have the categories augment the first choice, which is to get them in a public location that everybody would easily locate, and then augment it from there using the public categories. My only other suggestions for strategy would be that I am a strong believer that you should get together as a firm and talk about this. Maybe form a little committee, decide what would work. How do we all work together? Maybe rethink your doc type list, maybe call it something else and then roll out the, the use of the software where you could then say, here's how we best will profile. So the naming convention would not only involve the description, but the proper choice in the right binder, and then augmented by the proper category. That's it. Frank, you've actually also provided us with an example of the multitude of icons that can be assigned to categories <laughs> in your slide. <laughs> and John of just did that stars too. and flags. Yes. Yeah. Well, and you know, that's so simple, right? But people will associate in the future those icons. And as you get a whole lot on the screen and you have multiple categories assigned, those icons will help differentiate what they are without having to see the text. Yep. yep. All right, uh, I think Sandy is up next uh, to elaborate okay. a little bit on different ways of viewing the information with categories. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot of people don't know or don't use the tile view. There's a button, the same line where the customize button is. I'm sure you all know that button. Uh, to the left of that is one called tile view. You click on that and you get something similar to what you see here. And if you're using or sorting by categories, I think that's when the tile view does come in handy. Um, in this case, it's a big matter. It's my Bugs Bunny case, his dispute with Roger Rabbit. Um, so we've got a lot of files and then when they're in the tile view, you get a good big picture look at all the different types of documents that you have assigned to categories. Um, and then on our next slide, if you would be so kind. Thank you. Okay, so let's say though that maybe you don't like uh, the tile view. It's kind of one of those you either love it or hate it type feature. So let's say we sort by categories in the list view. Then with the labels that you see there that are um, in the, I kind of put a box around them there. You can see that it gives you more of a folder view. Not quite, I realize it's not really a folder, but it's divided up like a folder would be. So a lot of times, especially at brand new clients where, oh my God, I can't make a folder. What am I going to do? You can make folder categories or personal categories, and then it gives you the feeling of folders. And I have seen at a lot of sites where people have set their default to sort by categories. They make the labels where it says category affidavits, category appendices, they make those labels pretty big so they stand out. 
and then it's much easier for them just to go down through that list. So just keep in mind that there's different ways to display your screen when using anything, but with categories, I think it, it does help to display it a little bit differently. Thanks, and the icons are great. The yeah. I, <laughs> because they are, once you learn that icon, like I use the devil, don't ask me why, but I love the little devil. And like it says delete, I know I want to delete those documents. I don't even have to read the text. So, okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so Van, I think um, now that Sandy has told us different ways and, and Rick has also told us different ways of viewing the categories, uh, I think you are up next to talk about how to filter by them. Yes, that's right. and it. It's very useful to sort by categories in your work list. Uh, uh, however, uh, you may uh, just be looking at a list that's sorted by modified date and say you'd want to uh, see a list of available categories, which categories are in use in the list of documents that I'm looking at. <clears throat> and WorldDocs has this filter by categories uh, button that you can append to your toolbar at the top of the screen. So once you click it there on the left, that filter by categories, then if you move over to the right, you'll see your list of categories which are applied in the work list that you're looking at. So you click the check boxes for the categories of documents uh, that you want to see. In this case, I just want the responsive documents and then click the green select check mark and those are the only documents I'd be looking at. So if you want to work with those uh, subsets of a document that you're using categories uh, to uh, differentiate, then you can go ahead and use this filter by or add this filter by categories button uh, and look at just the specific ones. So go ahead and bring me to the next uh, uh, slide that's what we have here. Yes, okay, good. So this is how you would add them. Uh, you can customize most of the toolbars in WorldDocs. And as Sandy was pointing out, you can customize the, customize the grouping labels within a work list to ask uh, us or we'll get you some documentation if you need uh, on how to do that. It's very useful to differentiate them. Uh, to add a button on your toolbar, you would right click anywhere on the toolbar, append button, list, and where is filter by categories? There it's under list filter by categories. Let's go ahead and uh, notice on the right as well that no matter how you have uh, applied a filter to a list, you can always clear the filter from the little filter uh, box on the top right of your screen there. Click the little white X there and that will clear any filter you've applied, whether with a button or the filters tab or anything. Uh, let's go ahead and see the next um, uh, uh, option here. Now assign to categories. Uh, you can, if you add categories to your work list and sort your work list by categories, then you can right-click on a selection of documents and apply categories, uh, a category or categories to a number of files. Now, this button, we found there's one limitation with this button is so you can assign category or categories to a single document. So you may optionally want to add this button or not. Uh, if you have a single document and you uh, append the assigned categories button to your toolbar, uh, at the top, then uh, you can assign categories to a single document. If you want to assign categories to a multiple uh, documents, then do make sure that you do that from the uh, uh, from the work list and not from the toolbar button. Okay. And next slide, if there's another one there. And I just wanted to point out where you kind of have to dig for it to add this assigned to category. So again, right-click your toolbar, append button, edit, assign to categories. There we go. All right. All right. And I just want to add to that, Van, that yes. what I like about categories is that you can assign them at the time you save a document or especially with emails. I use categories with emails a lot. And so right when I hit that move or copy button from Outlook, I assign a category. Ah. Yes. Is there one more slide, um, Rebecca? I think that was it. Can you back up one? Ah, uh, yes. J note that you can assign multiple categories to a uh, single document when you click on Assign to 
categories. And you can deselect categories that you don't want assigned to that document. So you can do this to add or remove categories. Okay, very good. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Van. Mm -hmm. And I think up next we have Charlotte, who is going to talk yep, so there a little we are. bit more about this. We are. Um, I actually do use personal categories a lot and um, use the filters option because I'm always looking for them. But um, one of the things that I will do is bookmark them. So you want to search your category. And if it's a public category, don't forget to put yourself as the author. For instance, if you're looking for your draft documents, you don't want to see everybody's draft documents. You just want to see your own. Then put yourself as the author. When the list of documents comes up, then you go to bookmarks, add this list, and give it a name. You'll notice there's a little arrow, which means every time you tick it, it will do a fresh search. So I, uh, I have some personal categories called opportunities and follow-up. And um, I tick it every day and make sure that nothing is falling through the cracks. Great. Thank you, Charlotte. And John, um, we've already touched on this a little bit, but I think you've got some great uh, additional features to talk about in relation to multiple categories. So I'm a big proponent of showing WorldDocs users how to add comments when they save files so that they can use those comments uh, later on searching for a word or a phrase, something that's meaningful to them. And a comments could be a medical term, legal term, or personal word, just something they know and remember to get back to that file and files like it. But in this example here, with entering comments, users always have the challenge to remember what they used in a previous comment field. So when they perform a search, they get the expected results. And when you can't remember if you spelled a complex word correctly, if you used an acronym or a singular or plural word, then you lose the credibility of saving and searching. Um, go ahead, this, this is just one example of the word, the medical term blepharitis. Um, and the many ways that you can misspell it in the comments field uh, repeatedly over time. So in this screenshot, I teach users how to incorporate personal or public categories with words or phrases they use regularly to avoid using the incorrect word when saving a new document. And I call categories hard coding a comment. And that way you use the same value each time and you minimize your mistakes and maximize your proper search results. Go ahead to the next screenshot. I also teach the categories is the only place in WorldDocs where you can add multiple tags to a file. You can have many categories associated with a file, making, making it very handy in many situations. In this situation, there's three categories assigned to this document. One of my classic uses of categories was a medical firm working with pharmaceutical drugs and medical equipment patents. They were very medical term oriented. And when you try and freestyle a medical drug, a condition or a term, often it was very easy to make a spelling mistake. And once we incorporated categories, go ahead to the next screen, please. Once we incorporated categories, we were able to guarantee that these complex terms and words being used properly each and every time. So now when we save documents related to the medical condition, blepharitis, we didn't have to know how to spell it. We got it right using categories. And if you wanted to search for all documents related to the medical device named implantable cardioverter defibrillator, well, don't try and get that one right in the comments field. Save it to your personal or public categories like we did here. So, now you can see where listing these terms in categories table is much better than trying to enter them in the comments field. And I hope this helps. This helps. Yeah, I think I'm going to be going back through my WorldDocs documents and adding some uh, some categories based on your suggestion, John. <laughs> Implantable cardioverter defibrillator. Yep. Let's hope we don't need that. Yeah. Yes. I'm a good speller, but uh, I don't know if I could repeatedly spell that one correctly every time. 
could I pose a question to the group of, of all these all these years of expertise? Would you mind if I pose a question? Go for it. I, I was thinking more about planning and listening to all of you. I have a, a feeling about public categories that I think they should be only allowed to be modified, i.e. add, edit, delete, to a select few people within a firm because Indeed. they're relational. Once you assign them, if somebody were to delete it out of the master list, it magically goes back and finds everywhere it was assigned to and poof, they're gone. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how do you all feel? Do you feel similarly to me on that one? Absolutely. It's the same as, Absolutely. The same as document types. You want to control who creates document types by the same principle and maybe the same people who creates categories. Otherwise, you're going to get total chaos. Right. I once had a firm. Of, yep. Yeah, I once had a firm that insisted that everybody had to create document types. And a week, literally a week later, they called up and <clears throat> they said, um, "Now we've got two uh, document types: retainer." An engagement letter and those are the same thing and how do we get rid of it and this if you don't do that that will happen over and over and over again so you've got to have a strategy and you've got to manage what you expect and i, I remember in the opening poll by the way i don't think many people responded to the folder categories if, if i'm not mistaken right. and i don't think we've talked much about that today but I think the reason why some may not know that is because that by default, that feature is not enabled in a default installation of WorldDocs. And when I mentioned at the beginning that that was the former library's feature that was designed to help for trial prep, what, what's important about that concept is it's specific to the matter. So each matter can have its own unique, distinct set of different folder categories. And that's truly a spectacular function. It just takes a bit more planning and understanding to roll it out. And that's why the WorldDocs hasn't by default enabled that feature. Actually, Frank, uh, whenever people ask me about that feature, one of the examples I give is if you have several expert witnesses that are on a particular matter, you can create categories just for that matter for those expert witnesses and then flag the documents with their names so that you can very easily find the documents that have to go to those experts but yet it's not going to muck up the entire public category list it's only going to be on the list for that mm -hmm. matter or folder yes and may i uh i was working with a firm in canada just this last week uh where uh for trial prep uh the uh, folks at the firm wanted to have subfolders. They needed subfolders for trial prep. So uh, it took us about 20 minutes to come up with the strategy. How do we want to use these? And uh, uh, I uh, assisted them to set up uh, folder categories just for that matter. Uh, and uh, everyone seemed very enthusiastic about it. So you, you'd want to give that a try, particularly for trial prep, as you're saying here. And I think that for those people that that want to create their own uh, whatever, that's what personal categories are for. So if those right. people want to create their own system of organization, personal categories are the answer. We, we actually just got a question in that, you know, kind of fits in here, uh, asking um, if there's a way to find out who created what category uh, in the case where the ability is not black, locked down yet. Uh, no, there's not. Well, if the, so. there's a way to maybe, because if you, I believe, if you right click and do the audit query, mm -hmm. I believe it'll say renamed. It won't say the name of the category, but the because you're editing the profile when you create the category, it'll say that the, the profile was renamed. That's absolutely yeah. true. The, the problem is renamed is, is combined with some other similar functions. True. So you can't you can't count on it by itself being only related to that. Right. right. Also, that, right. that tells you when the category was applied to the document. It doesn't right. tell you who created the category. 
Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to speak. I don't want to speak ahead <laughs> of the, the 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 group here, Rebecca. But I have a feeling in the next generation world ox, you're going to see a lot more development of these features with things I won't even mention, but I know they're super important to a lot of people on in this audience today. But you're not going to mention them because uh, that's that's Ray's purview. <laughs> that's correct. I would not go there. <laughs> Well, I think this demonstrated, um, unlike many other webinars we've done, how rich a single feature can be and how important that single feature can be. Wouldn't you all agree? I'm sure. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. And again, I think the strategy, which we've all talked about in a variety of different instances, the strategy is very important up front to get it right so that it's effective. Um, and like I tell everybody, it's not about what we do today. It's how do we find what we save today, six months later. And yeah. categories are just right. another way to help us accomplish that with accuracy and validity. I want to say this. This is one of the features ahead. that that um, is generally not used. I think the survey uh, showed us that. And so when we uh, do our um, World Docs uh, Lunch and Learns, for our clients, we we emphasize these types of uh, features, besides categories being one of them, but uh, filters as well, that people just don't use when they should because it does save a lot of time or it does give them a um, a unique capability that they could use World Doc for that they were not aware of. So I just think that uh, firms that are attending should uh, consider having more training on these types of things and and making sure that their user population knows that they exist and how to use them. Yeah, I think that's that's one of the things that, uh, I don't know, I can't say I was surprised to see that there were so many people in our survey that uh, were not using categories, but uh, I, I definitely find when I speak with clients that many of them are not aware of a lot of these rich features. So I'm, I'm glad that we've been doing this webinar series and I'm glad that all of you, uh, all of all of the resellers that we have on the webinar, are uh, adept at explaining these features and and can work with our clients on implementing them. We we typically send out a, a what we call a user skills survey um, prior to doing training with uh, going back and doing you know follow up training with a firm. Or if a firm is referred to us from World Docs looking for training, we typically start it with a user skills survey. And a lot of the topics that we've covered in our webinar, we identify in this survey and say, do you use these? Are you familiar with it? Et cetera, et cetera. So when we go in to do our advanced training, we can highlight the areas like the categories that 70% of the people say, we not only don't use them, we don't even know what they are. And then you can identify specific areas to target to show them these features and make them more comfortable and um, smart about using the World Doc software too. And I think that's an important thing that John and Peter, and I, all of us do when we're working with people, is to find out where the holes in their knowledge are. Because I, one of the things I wanted to mention about categories is categories is in some ways kind of like another world docs feature called relations and, and what i mean in their similarity is if you assume that everyone in the firm is using it you can do searches and find things by category or how they're related but if you have some people in the firm that aren't familiar with it who aren't using it then they don't tag the documents appropriately when you do a search for things in a category a document may not come up just because the user wasn't trained to be able to do that. So it's important for the firm when they use these kind of features to make sure that it's you know, ubiquitous, that everybody's doing it within the firm. And that's what training does. Um, I don't know if we, we don't have any more uh, questions come in, but I don't know if there's anything else that anybody would like to, um, to add. 
still about categories or any other things that we've talked about? I'd, I'd like to make a comment about uh, the personal categories uh, feature that we talked about at the beginning. Uh, I know a number of folks who uh, use the personal categories extensively to categorize and track their uh, activities and tasks for particular matters. And uh, so I just want to encourage folks, uh, if that is uh, enabled for your environment, to definitely try working with the personal categories feature. Right, and maybe it maybe it's obvious, maybe it's not everyone, but personal categories don't affect anybody else. So whatever you have on your list and how you've used them, nobody else knows about. So it's a free for all for your own benefit. <laughs> yeah, and we can do a tutorial with you. Contact your reseller. We're happy to set up some training. Okay. Good deal. Oh, so. Wait. One other thing that I'd like to add is just that um, for some of the material that we have here, we actually have two handouts that are available for download from the GoToWebinar interface. So you can make sure that you grab those before you sign off. Um, we did get one question in, uh, can folder categories be used in search? No. Okay. <laughs> Simple. Folders, <laughs> but then, but you can you... use... Folder categories show up when you list a matter, but you can't search for them. You can select them or put them into a tile view or through filter or whatever, but they're not searchable, unlike personal and public categories, which are searchable. Although once you get to the matter, uh, since you can filter by them once you get to the matter, you can still have a way to just see right. the things that have that right. category attached to them. Right, and if you add filter by categories button, you can see it with one click. Well, and that's why that button is so very, very, very important, because that's your best way, Van, to see your folder categories, isn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Then um, I think we are kind of at the end of the, of the uh, webinar today. Um, as Rebecca mentioned, take your uh, chance, download the documents, and uh, we want to thank everyone who participated today. Uh, we are going to post a recording of this webinar on our website, and uh, you can find it on the uh, webinar page along with uh, all the other recordings of past webinars. So if you missed any, you can go take a look at that again. And uh, then we hope you'll join us again for one of the future webinars. And we hope to have, have a good weekend. And thank you again, you everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.